Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, whatever time you have decided to view this video. But what I got, I got a video for you. It's a little complex because most people have heard this and they have thought about the literal part of it and not overall, okay, or what it means, the esoteric part of it. But I'm going to just get into it and then I'll break it down as I go along. In my father's house are many mansions. Okay? In my father's house are many mansions. 2023 to infinity. This is talking about the chosen peoples of God, the peoples who will be able to move in time, future times, into several levels of consciousness, several levels of, of, of earth existence and the universal existence, several areas of dimensions of time. And this is why I say in my father's house are many mansions, many places of rest, many places of journey, etc. And you got this initiates put it under Jesus. But what it is, it's a truthism that you're supposed to know at this particular time of human history. And this is why it's put under Jesus. Most people, when they look at that, the first thing they think about, God's going to give me this big, beautiful house, this two, three-story house, probably the biggest shack house in Miami, mm -hmm. or biggest trunk place in Mar-a-Lago, or biggest, uh, or some of the other places, uh, uh, 50 Cent, a place that he used to have, that he bought from uh, Mike Tyson, these kind of places. Okay, it had nothing to do with that. It's broader than that, much bigger than stuff like that. This is its level of consciousness, environments that God will bring you in as your journey, as a spirit person, as a God person in different universal levels, okay? It's no one set place. And he's telling you about that. And the initiative is talking about it. And they put it under Jesus because you have to remember they wanted you, the Catholic Church or the Eurocentric world at that time, wanted you to believe in that Jesus that they brought you during the time of Josephus and, and the Flavius family, etc. And that was uh, what the Catholic Church wanted you to see. So by them doing that and you reading the Bible literally, that's who you have seen, that Jesus that Eurocentric Jesus or that, that Jesus that they were all you uh, said that came 2,000 years ago, they wanted you to see it under him. But by being initiates, you see beyond that because initiates know the real truth. And so you need to be initiate to translate it so you can see what those initiates were saying because they did not want to disturb the, the Vatican and their power. So they wrote it in a coded language, in an esoteric language. So that would hinder, hinder the Catholic rule over the masses of the peoples at the time that this Bible was written. And you got to see that. These are scholars. It was Hebrew scholars appointed by 54, appointed uh, by uh, King James in this posse. And you got to see that. Now let's, let's go on with this. Okay, let not your heart be troubled. Let not your heart be troubled. Now, what is, what, what is the areas of your heart being troubled? What is it trying to tell you? Because you need the arts. You need to know what these things are. One of the things you need to know that is the same, the unk. What is the unk is? The unk is the cross that you knew in the beginning. The unk, you see the unk made a certain way. It's almost made like a head, really. The unk is made like that. It's trying to tell you yourself. What do the unk tell you? Man, or uh, uh, the Egyptian mystery system tell you, man, know thyself. Where did they learn their knowledge from? Thought. Tehuti. They were uh, thought priests, which later were known as Machesnik priests. Okay? And you need to see that in the Bible. Okay? The unk and the cross is the same thing. Now, if you do a unk like that, you do a cross, it's the same thing. Same symbolism. It's just that they have taken the cross and made it a mockery out of it, hanging a man on the cross. 
and most people don't know that just like the Schwarzenegger that uh, Hitler had it was a holy symbol and they made a mockery out of it putting it on the Nazism and white supremacy so you got the holy symbols are holy but when man get and put his his philosophy with it then it become tainted and you got to always remember that the penta pentacle the pinnacle is the same way. You look at my book and you'll see the pinnacle. It's the same way. It's telling you the same thing, the cross philosophy. And you got to see that. Also, it's the divine, divine, the divine philosophy. It's a divine philosophy. What is that divine philosophy? Right here, you'll see the divine philosophy. And why is this important? Because these are the five laws of God. This is the philosophy of God for mankind. And you have to see that. And most people have never been taught that. And you got to know what the cross philosophy is. It's not about no man hanging on no cross. Jesus told you to take up your own cross. And this is your cross. This is what you got right here. This is you, yourself. Take up your cross and follow me. But what he's saying, he's saying that uh, the initiate had it being said through that Jesus to tell you about the Jesus of the future with the code name, okay? That you have to be able to know what these five areas of life is. You got to understand them because nothing you do from the cradle to the grave, now second of your life is outside those five principles. It's nothing you do. Nothing you could do is outside that. You can't even think outside that. And you got to see that. Why is it so important? Because I'm going to start with economics, then I'll work down the morals. If you see the Bible, the Bible deal with this. The Bible Say, God bless man. Okay, that's more. Then he say, be fruitful. That's economic. Then he say, multiply. That's sociology. Then he say, subdue. That's political. Then he gave them a diet and appetite. Okay, those are the five divine laws. Okay, now deal with the cross. If you're standing up, you're going to see the cross here. Morals. Economic, I mean, morals right here. The head. You look up to God. Morals. Okay, God rests in the penal gland. He come there and and connect with you in there, okay? Into your intuition, okay? Then you got this. It's a, uh, uh, in the cross, it's more. Then it's economic. Economic, why? Because eco everything economic comes from the earth. Everything economically comes from the earth. Even your oxygen. It grows, the plants grow connected to the earth and the oxygen dispersed into the air, okay? Uh, your car, your house, your shoes, your clothing, Everything comes from the earth. That's economics. Definitely. Okay. Then you deal with the social. Social. Social is, that's why they tell you to wear your ring on your left hand. But they never tell you why. Because it's for the ones at the top to understand. Because they're the one ruling over you. Because they know if they dominate these five areas, you are in a voluntary slavery unto them. No matter who you are. Okay. No matter who you are. You could be Dr. So-and-so. You could be president, so and so, it don't matter. You are in a voluntary slavery to the higher ups, okay? The aristocrats, the royals, who, who this is ingrained into their mind to know this is how they can rule you. They know that's what they need to control to rule you and have power over you, okay? And you have to see this. Now it's time for you to know how you've been ruled, okay? Because you never knew you put your a ring on your left hand. You never knew why. You just know that traditionally they tell you to do that. That's social. That deal with the family. Uh, that deal with the spouse. Individual first, the family. Okay, the spouse and the your society. But then political. Political, when he says to do, that means that everything, when you come together with people, you, you come into this group where you're going to pick leaders and say, well, you're going to be the minister of finance. You're going to be the minister of of, uh, of algae culture. You're going to be the minister of this and minister of that. And these are why they set that up like that. Okay? Uh, you're going to be the king of this or you're going to be a royal controlling this and that and that. Okay? And diet and appetite. That means that everybody have to eat and drink and have a diet and appetite. In the beginning it told you a plant-based diet. Then after Noah time, at Noah time, after Noah time, it told them yeah, that the flesh that of or the blood that of you have it as well, but if you eat it, you will surely die. Showing you that 
you're going to go from living a thousand years down to living only 120 years. And Psalm tell you about 70 to 80 years. Now we're coming back around this paradigm shift, back up toward the Son of Man time. So you should be living up to 120 years, but the people who are controlling this here is not permitting you to. By giving you certain drugs, giving you certain stuff, food, uh, 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 that is not alkaline and all this other stuff. And you got to remember, they are the one that's controlling the world. They are the one that's controlling your, your uh, what they call food mafias. They are the one that's controlling your finances. They're the one that's controlling your society. They say how many people live in a certain area or not, etc. And they're controlling everything in your life. And you got to see that. Economically, they're controlling your job. The stability, the finance, the wealth, they're controlling that. Diet and appetite, the eating, drinking, health. Okay, truth. Social, self, family, community, kingdom. Political, uh, council, laws, assistance, love. Okay, uh, they, you know, and, and people don't realize that. They say, well, you say love, yeah. You know what, in this political arena, they control who you can love and who you can't love, or who you can fall in love and who you can't. Because if you look back about 50 years ago, black males and females, black females and white, white males and black males and white females, they could not, because of the law, they could not marry in the south, southern states, and even some of the northern states. They were not allowed to marry. In some countries, you, certain religious people couldn't marry other religious people. Muslims weren't marrying Catholics and all this other stuff. But we're talking about America now. See, this is a very powerful thing to control. Morals is extremely powerful. Unity with integrity. Oneness, God. See, when they tell you that there's a man named Jesus, he's God, the Almighty, he's a creator. Okay, and they just create him out of thin air because someone come up, some rappers come up, that he gonna, uh, uh, Ptolemy come up, that he gonna make a, uh, a, a God that pleased the Egyptians and the Greek, and he come up with, with Serapis. And later the Romans come up with Mitras, and later the other part of Romans, the Flavors, and etc., come up with Yahshua, uh, uh, Jesus the Christ. And see, you're not seeing this thing these creations that man did and they got you bowed to them and worshiping them and they got you believing in this and that. Jesus is a code name, okay? And they would never tell you that. Jesus is a code name to Louis. That's why they named their French king Louis. Like Louis XIV, what that means, the sun king. And whether the Louis thing came from, it came from Clovis before then. And what was the myth that was around Clovis that the angel brought a flower uh, to Clovis and uh, he was favored and the Vatican them started naming uh, the Louis from Clovis. And you need to know this stuff because you're not learning any of this stuff. You're just taking the Bible and reading it and you're going off them in Sunday school and they tell you just believe it. You are saved by God in the name of Jesus because you just believe. That's not going to get it now. You're in this paradigm ship. That ain't going to get it now. And if you don't believe in Jesus, you go in the hell. Catholic created the hell. You ain't have nothing about no hell before the Catholic created the hell. But you, you swear that there's a hell because they tell you there's a hell. Okay? And you got to understand this. And I know this is very difficult for some people to fathom and understand, but it's truthism. You got to go do your homework. You can't go and just read some book come from your church. You got to go and dig, people. You can't just read books that come from America. You got to read and see what the other peoples of the world were saying about this. Before America existed, you had nations like Spain. You had nations like France. You had Britain. You had Russia. You had uh, China and all this other stuff. It's a lot of information that's necessary to build your consciousness that you could be able to see truthism. You cannot just believe what somebody say and run with it without any, any checking, checks and balances. It just don't work like that. Now, I'm not trying to rock your boat if that's not what you want, 
But if it's not what you want and you come against what I'm trying to say and not trying to check me and see the truthism, then you're not going to make it to no promised land, my people. And it's right around the corner. God doesn't say what he said in, in, in the other election. You ain't going to make it where you think you're going to make it to because of your heart. You got to get your heart in line with what God wants. You got to vibrate and, and uh, you got to have that frequency to go into this other area because it's necessary for you to vibrate at a certain level of consciousness. And if you're not vibrating at that level and you're eating whatever you think you want to eat and you say, I don't care what that Negro say, I'm going to be there, he be there, I'm going to be there and all that. You, you live in that fantasy world you want to. The word of God and them initiates done wrote what's going to go on and he done gave me the gift to interpret it. See, if God called a, call a messenger and you think because you got a big church with 10,000, 20,000, 50,000 people, or so you over a big organization that got a million people of that, it don't make you it don't make you nobody but a person, a businessman that's able to put together such of a thing or come in and, and embrace such of a thing. It don't make you chosen. They say many are called with few chosen. It don't make you chosen. What does it make you? It's like the prophets or Elijah and the prophets of Baal. The 400 prophets of Baal and the ones of the road. And, and look at love, Elijah. Elijah wasn't giving a damn about all those men. He didn't care nothing about them. what they own or nothing else. He knew who he was with. He was with the God, the Almighty. He was with the Lord God thought. And the same thing here. I know who I'm with. I seen him in a vision. He came to me. He done gave me revelation to prove to you who I am. So I'm not here trying to prove anything. I'm here to give you a message. And it's for you to heed to the message. And if you refuse to heed to it, then may God have mercy on your soul. And that's basically how it is. I love you. And the brothers I am, and sisters I am, don't get me wrong, but I have to do my job. Because he told Elijah, take it to the wicked as well so as the righteous. So your blood won't be, their blood won't be on your hand. And you have to see that. Let's go on down with this. Let's go down with this. Stuff. Let's go. Uh, John, okay, let's deal with this. Philosophy, philosophy. Love of wisdom Love of truth, seek to understand fundamental truth about themselves, and these things are necessary. This is part of what philosophy is, You're learning philosophy. Okay, John 14, 2. In my father's house are many mansions. If it was not so, I would have told you. John 16, 13 to 15. Now be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come. He will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear thought shall he speak, and he shall show you things to come. He shall show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine and show, and show it unto you. All things thought the Father have are mine. Therefore, said I, thought, he shall take of mine and shall show it unto you. The knowledge that I bring forth, you, forth unto you, I get it from thought, from the being a part of the priesthood, of the thought priesthood, what they call the Machazic priesthood. He give me this information, and he rests with me. So I could reveal this stuff to you. It's his stuff. It's his who he is. Thought is a God over all the writings. All the writings. He's the one that control, have control of the Akasa records. If you study our father's Egyptian philosophy and stuff like that, you will hear that thought was a God of the God. They say that when, when the source speak, thought is like the lip. Of God. You need to read all the attributes about Paul and know who you're dealing with. He's a high priest. The uh, in the Renaissance time, the European know him as Hermes. Okay? The Hebrews know him as Melchizedek. 
And you got to know. And there's different names and all the cultures had names for it. Even the Chinese culture had a name for it. And you need to see this. It's very, very, very important. Now, I'm going to give the name of the individuals that we have that you need to know that's been good and faithful to this organization. Marvin G., one of the priestess, Miss Shirley Oliver, Antoinette Mike Miller, Charles Lindsay, uh, Mar Marcy uh, Gordon, Marcius Gordon, uh, Steve Thomas, Stephen Thomas, Nancy Randolph, and Wesley Seas. Okay, these individuals we give praises to because God has put them in our path, put them connect to this organization so they could be people that we could be proud of and we could show their name and show, hey, our respect for them, okay? And may God bless them all. Okay, your century artwork of enslavement. Your century artwork of enslavement. Daniel 8, 12. And a host was given him, a host was given him, talking about the little woman, host was given him against the daily sacrifice, okay, against the saints, by reason of transgression, and it cast down the truth to the ground, and it practiced and prospered, okay? This is back to that time, are you talking about Rome, even before then, Ptolemy, Ptolemy the uh, first, Sotera. See, they created this hoax, and they changed the narrative that our fathers had of Egypt when they talk about Serapis, I mean, when they talk about, you know, when they talk about uh, Osiris, Isis, and Horus. See, the Isis and Horus story is the story that later in the Euro century created as Mary and the baby Jesus, okay? But they took that truth and they threw it to the ground and created their own story, their own mythology. And that's how you get Mary and Jesus, which is Isis and Horus, okay? And you need to see this because it's very important. And this is what it's saying. And that's what the Catholic Church have taken that story and, and Christendom have taken that story and fed it to you today and told you just believe. Okay, and it was based on Egyptian mystery and Egyptian mythology. And you got to see that. And check me, prove me wrong. Okay, because this is where the baby Jesus came from. But you today in Christianity, and you come in into the Eurocentric Christianity, and you go and made you, built your Baptist church, your Presbyterian church, your Pentecostal churches, and all this, and you just say, that Jesus, and you celebrate Christmas and all this other stuff, and you just say that this Jesus that, that you essentially show you, that, that's God. That's really who it is. And, it, and the U.S. century already will tell you, and especially your century scholar always could tell you, if they be honest with you, that this story of Jesus mirrored the story of uh, Isis and Horus, okay? And you need to see that. You got to see what's going on. Even the, the old part of the old ancient writing uh, on the Christianity had Jesus born in a cave. But then later they changed it and said he was born in a manger. Okay. They change things when they want. They do what they want to do with it. But when you come up today and you hear it and you follow just believe, you caught up in that madness and don't realize it. Okay. Let's go on. Okay. Uh, uh, John 14, 2. I go to prepare a place for you. Verse uh, 3. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. Thought, where I am, there you may be also. Now, what is he saying here? Okay. Now, the real Savior is thought. And then this should put thought in there. But he left it though, you would think that this is their Jesus that they created who's saying he's going to prepare a place for you. I go and prepare a place for you. And that's where they see, you see the second coming ideology from. 
But this is not about a second coming. This is a time of the paradigm shift. A thought always come at that paradigm shift. After the age of Pisces, he always come. After the dark age, a Satan age, he always come and set things in line for Horace or set things in line that you will live for a thousand years, the son of man time. So that is not coming from Jesus time uh, forward. That's coming from after Noah time, letting the, the uh, a devil uh, uh, control his thousand, six thousand years, then Horace, a thought setting it up for Horace to control that other years all the way back round to the end of that Noah type time for the next dark age to come into existence. And it happened over and over and over again. And most people are not aware of this. So when they read that, they think, and don't use no arts, they think that this is Jesus' second coming. Okay? It's not that Jesus that they gave you. It's the other one that's coming. The one named Louis is coming. The one that the French king named their, their, uh, all their Louis after. That one that is to come. The true royal that is to come. And that's what that's about. But most people don't know it. And I'm going to read it again. I go to prepare a place for you. See, God is always going to prepare a place for you, a time for these peoples, uh, these spirits to come back to this plan in progress. After they come out of that 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 age, because you're going, you go, you're coming. Just use this here. You're coming. This in the procession of equinox. This just say this is Noah time where you live a thousand years. After Noah time, you go into the dark age. You're only going to live 120 years. Then you're going to live 70, 80 years. And then in Aries, then in Pisces, you're going to go back to 120 years. Then, at Aquarius time, you're going back to 1,000 years. As above, so below. It's Noah time. Noah was a son of man. Okay, at uh, the son of man time, it's 1,000 years. Then you're going to increase. Because as you go that way, you're going to increase and get closer to Sirius. Sirius dump an energy out and a knowledge out way beyond anything you could ever know. You get nothing but you're going higher and higher in your vibration. You're going higher and higher in your knowledge as you go toward serious and so. And these are things they never taught you. They don't teach you the art, so you would not know what this planet do at what time did it do what it do. Okay, okay, let's go on. Okay, Daniel, let's go with Daniel. Okay. Okay, let's just go with Daniel 7, 9. And I beheld until the throne was cast down and the ancient of days, this time of thought come, did set, whose garment was white as snow and the hair of his head like pure wood. And talking about no Jesus, talking about thought now. They're talking about uh, Machazi now. His throne was like a fierce flame and his will as burning fire. Verse 11. And I beheld even until the beast it's always about a nation. The beast was slain and his body destroyed and given to the burning flame. Okay, what beast is they talking about? The book of Sunk America. So we're talking about this nation, this beastly nation. This nation is going to be taken out of its position so that the kingdom of God could be planted here on this earth. And you're going to be dealing with the watchers. You're going to deal with the watchers. Let's go further. Daniel 7 13. One like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the ancients of days, came to thought, and they brought him near before him. Verse 14. And there was given him dominion, glory, and a kingdom which shall not pass away, and his kingdom, thought, which shall not be destroyed. That means his kingdom not to be sought up here in this nation, O America. And you got to see this. Okay, you got to see this. This is the end of this lecture. We hope it wasn't that long. Uh, we're still looking for our 10 people with the 100 k Okay, you can make a donation to Louis Armstrong Ministry at 7536 Jane Lane North, Jacksonville, Florida, 32210. Or you can go to Cross Rock at that same address, 7536 Jane Lane North, Jacksonville, Florida, 32210. Or you can go to Cross Rock Incorporated on Giveify on your mobile app on the chair. That's Cross Rock Incorporated on uh, Giveify on your mobile app on the chair. And you also go with PayPal. PayPal at armstronglewisj at gmail.com. 
That's PayPal, Armstrong Lewis J at gmail.com. And you're also going to go with Cash App, Cash App, dollar sign, SWAU 1954. It's Cash App, dollar sign, SWAU 1954. I would like you to focus on this, this lecture and think about it because you are a chosen people. God has chosen you because of the fact that He made a covenant, a hope to your heart that He's going to restore you back on His land. And He meant what He said. And so you might as well just get ready in the future, the very near future, to see these events happen that you're going to know that's what God is doing. Heavenly Father, thank you for all that you have done, all that you will do. Thank you for permitting me to be in the midst of your chosen people, that they could be resurrected from this dead state in which this world has placed them into, so they can know themselves. Heavenly Father, thank you for everything. In the name of the source, our Lord, in the name of the Savior, the Lord God, Father. Amen.